The table below has data from a 2009 Canadian Journal of Human Sexuality study. The data shows gender differences in response to partner influence and social expectation questions among students who had ever had sexual intercourse. So they go on to explain the sample a little bit, and then we come down to this final phrase here. It says, use the results in a 1% significance level to test the claim that unwanted sex and gender are independent. So I've underlined the phrase to test the claim so that we can see here clearly that it's a hypothesis test they want us to do. And they ask us to do it on these two categories to see if they are independent. That reminds me of the chi-squared test for independence. When I look at the data, I see it's a perfect fit for the chi-squared test for independence. We have a, um, a question here that's being asked, and we have the cell counts for the response. So it's categorical data, and it's clearly a chi-squared test for independence that we must run on the procedure. So the first step is to, of course, express the claim. I've done that for us already, so I'm going to put that here up for us to see. Okay, so the claim is that unwanted sex and gender are independent variables. All right, now, HO and HA are going to express the same pair of ideas each time for every test that we run using the chi-squared test of independence. HO will always say independent. NHA will always say dependent. All right, so that's the pair of hypotheses. Independence, of course, means that they are unrelated in terms of probability, so that you know knowledge of one does not affect the outcome of the other. And uh, same with dependence, of course, expressed as the opposite relationship, that you know the probability changes when you include the information of the other thing. So for example, if I say, what's the probability somebody has unwanted sex given that the person is female, that affects the probability. So the probability of unwanted sex is generally not equal to the probability of unwanted sex given female, for example. That would be an example of where things would be dependent. Okay, so HO versus HA, that's what we're doing. Let's write down our um, alpha level here and uh, know that alpha here in this problem is 1%. They said use a 1% significance level. So 1% there. Now from there, of course, that's 0 0.01. Now from there, let's go ahead and manipulate the data itself. We're going to need an observe observation column. This is going to be all the observed cell counts that we had in the problem. So let's go and get the original data and look at that for our problem here. So in our problem, the observed data here is going to be these four cells. The other cells are just the total. So it's just those four cells that we're interested in here. So the observations are going to be 826 for the first cell. 883 for the cell next to that, 118 for the first cell in the second row, and then 318 for the value next to that. Okay, so those are our observations. The next column we need to come up with is the expected value column. So it's a little different for the chi-squared test of independence. So let me just write down the formula again to remind you of that. It's going to be row total times column total all divided by the grand total. So grand total. Okay, so try to remember that that's the formula for the expected values, and then you'll understand where I'm getting my answers from as I work these problems out. Okay, so let's do it one by one for each of the cells here. So looking at the first cell where 826 is, the row total is 1709. So 1709 times the column total 944, divided by the grand total 2145. When we do that, we get 752.119. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for 883. It'll be 1709 times 1201, divided by the grand total of 2145. When we're done with that, we get 956. 0.881881. Okay, let's do it again for 118. It'll be 436 times 944. 436 times 944 divided by the grand total 2145. We get the answer 191.881. Okay, and then last cell we have to work with is 318. It's 436, 1201 to get the row total, column total product. So 436 times 1201 divided by 2145. When we're finished with that, we get 244.119. Okay, so there's our observed 
and our expected uh, value columns. Okay, now from there, the next step of the process is to do a column called observation or the observed values minus the expected values, right? This is actually an easy column to get. We're going to do the first subtraction that we see, 826, 826 minus 752.119. And when we get that answer, which is 73.881 here, 73.881, we realize that all the other ones underneath are actually going to be the same thing, basically except for sometimes they'll be negative. Like here, the smaller number minus the bigger number, it's gonna give us a negative difference. Same thing here, but the difference will be 73.881. How do I know that? Because that's the pattern in these chi-squared procedures. So we're able to get one of these only and then fill all the rest in just, you know, figuring out the sign, right? So if it's smaller up front, it'll be negative 73.81, right? That's because the first one was 73.81. So that makes our work a little faster. Then for the next column, we have to do observed minus expected quantity squared, right? Observed minus expected quantity squared. Well, since all the observed minus expected are basically the same value, we just have to square that value. And of course, negative squared will end up being positive anyway, so we just have to square it and just put that number in. So it's 5458.402. So 5458.402. We're going to do that all the way down, right? 5458.402. 5458.402. And finally, 5458.402. Okay, so they're all the same in that column. The next column is the big one, the important one. The observed minus expected squared divided by the expected value. This gives us our chi-squared test statistic when we're done. Okay, so what we have to do is literally do the value here divided by the expected value across the way. Now, that number, 5458.402, it's the same number for each of these cells. So I'm just going to store it in my calculator as x. So that way I don't have to keep typing it in each time. But remember, it's going to be 5458 um, divided by this number, 752.119. That's going to be our first observed minus expected squared divided by expected. And we get the answer 7.257. 7 all right, let's do it again. We're going to do it again this time for this number divided by this number. So again, that 54, 58 number I have stored in my calculator divided by 956.881. And we're done, we get 5.704. Then we do it again, right? Same number. X in my calculator, that 54, 58 number divided by 191. 0.881. Get the answer 28.447. Okay, and then the last one, the 5458 number divided by 244.119. 22 22.360. 22.360. Alright, let's total that up and see what we get. So it's that answer, 22.360 added to 28.447 added to 5.704 added to 7.257. And we get the answer 70 or 63, pardon me, 0 0.768. 63.768. All right, now let's keep in mind that that is our chi-squared test statistic. So this is our chi-squared test statistic. All right, now that we have the test statistic, let's go get our critical value so we can compare our test stat against that critical value. Okay, so now let's look at our critical value. Our curve looks kind of like an F statistic curve or an F curve, right? It's long right tail on the right hand side is our rejection region. And what we're going to do is be looking for the critical value that begins the rejection region on this number line down here below. So the chi-squared test stat is going to be using alpha, comma, now here's the degrees of freedom. It's going to actually be the row total minus one, not the row total, but the number of rows minus one. 
the column minus one or the number of columns minus one multiplied together. That's how we get our degrees of freedom. So in this case, in our problem, alpha, if you remember, was 1%. So we're going to say that um, we're dealing with a chi-squared 0 0.01 value where the degrees of freedom are specifically the number of rows. We have one, two rows minus one, which is going to be one times the number of columns. We have one, two columns minus one is one. So it'll be one times one, or in other words, one. So let's go under the chi-squared tail at 0.01 with one degree of freedom and see what value we find for our critical value. Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table looking up 0.01 with one degrees of freedom. We get 6.63490. Okay, so our critical value is 6.635. 6.635. All right, now let's compare that against our chi-squared test statistic that we came up with earlier. That chi-squared test statistic, if you remember from our calculations, was 63.768. 63.768. So there's no doubt that this test stat lands in the rejection region. Certainly over here, so we're going to say reject HO and therefore support HA. Now since our claim is the same as HO in the sense that our claim says that we're talking about independence here, that the two categories are independent, we're deciding we should reject that. So we're going to say the sample data, the sample data allows rejection of the claim. And the claim, of course, is that um, unwanted sex and gender are independent variables. All right, so that's it.